In this video, we're going to work on things that are either bothering me or need to be fixed. As you can see, our turn signals work, third brake light and right brake light work, but the brake light on the left side of the car is not working and it looks like it's simply going to be just a blown out bulb. So we're going to put a new bulb in it and test it out. Okay, so running lights, check, brake lights, check. So everything looked like it's working. It was simply just a blown out light bulb, which is all great. As you can see, everything is now working and uh, I don't have to worry about that anymore. But there is one more thing back here that is bothering me. If you look inside the third brake light right, right here, you can see what looks to be maybe like cigarette ashes, dust. I really don't know what it is, but I'm sure this thing has never been removed to be cleaned out. And it's been sitting like this since 1991. So it's really easy to get this third brake light out of the way and it gives us the opportunity to clean that up and clean the back side of the glass. With a few sprays of Windex on a blue shop towel as you can see it made a massive difference. I'm really happy with the way it turned out and it looks great. So now we can go ahead and focus on the front of the car because we have a few issues with other light bulbs as well. As you can see I just turned on my hazard lights and if we go look at the front of the car you're going to notice that we have no turn signals. In order to get to the light bulb we have to remove this lens cover which comes off pretty easy with just two Phillips screws. And it's going to give us the opportunity to actually clean this out because I'm sure it's been a while since someone's been inside of here. You're going to see that a lot in this video. We're going to go in to do one thing and end up doing something else. It's one of those while you're in there type of deals and you really just have to take advantage of them. Whenever I'm handling light bulbs, I like to use a blue shop towel like this one or I just put on a set of gloves. The reason for that is the oils from your fingers can actually transfer over to the light bulb and decrease the life of them. So it's why I try not to touch them directly. Inside of this lens here, right where the Phillips screw goes, I saw like some dirt and grime and the only thing I could think of to get that out of there was a Q-tip and it seemed to work well. Off camera, I did clean the inside of this housing as well as the gasket in case you're wondering. Okay, so it looks like our turn signal issue is all sorted out. It's working, but we still have one more issue on this side, which is the marker light, or at least I think it's called the side marker light. Uh, again, more blown out light bulb, so we're going to go ahead and take care of that real fast. Now, keep in mind, everything that I'm doing here on the right side needs to be repeated on the left side of the car because, again, more light bulbs that are blown out. But there's no need to show any of that because it's going to be the same exact process. Here I'm using a little bit of dielectric grease right where the marker light slides on and off because it gave me a little bit of a fight when I was trying to get it off. So this thing really helped and now it's able to slide on and off without any problems. And it, once again we're just going to go ahead and test out all of the lights to make sure everything is working. And it is. Now that all of the lights work I can focus my attention on the rear hatch. Now these struts still work but I don't think it's a bad idea to change them out because they're clearly past their prime. Especially if you've ever dealt with a CRX or if you've ever been hit in the head by a hatch that just randomly falls down, you know exactly what I'm talking about.
This plastic piece that I pulled off of the old struts doesn't seem like it's going to work with the new ones, so I'm just going to have to ditch them. And now it's very noticeable that the new struts have a lot more force, I'm happy with that. All of the lug nuts on the car are pretty rusty and some of them are even different types. So I just thought it would be a good idea to change all of them, make sure everything's consistent. Uh, by now you may have noticed that what I'm doing to the car isn't really, you know, upgrading it, making it better. It's just kind of a personal preference, you know, little things that make me happy. <laughs> In my previous video we found out that the car not only has a bad wheel bearing but one of the studs is damaged also. So in this video we're going to go ahead and replace that wheel bearing and that way we can fix that damaged stud while we're at it. In case you're wondering why I'm tightening down all the lug nuts when I just mentioned that I'm going to be changing a wheel bearing well it's because uh, all of these repairs just spanned across you know multiple days. So it's why I'm tightening the lug nuts today because the wheel bearing is actually going to get done on a different day. The magic of editing. Beam me up, Scotty Kilmer. Next up, let's change out the steering wheel. There's nothing wrong with the original steering wheel. It's just I have an aftermarket one kicking around in the garage. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on. I'm going to be using an NRG quick release hub. Uh, the reason for that is somewhat for security. I know a lot of people believe that they don't really provide much security because they're easily bypassed. And I can agree with that. But every little bit counts, right? Now, uh, primarily, I like the feel of the aftermarket steering wheels because race car, right? But I used to have this steering wheel on my Hyundai Tiburon. Yes, that's right. I used to drive a Hyundai. And I love that car. If I could find a picture of it, I'm going to go ahead and put it up right here so you guys can see it. I'd have to say that this is one of the easier steering wheels to install. It really helps that there's no airbags involved. And in case you're wondering, yes, the horn does work.
Since it's going to be a while since I put my new engine in the car, I still want to be able to drive the car around and enjoy it, but it also has to be reliable. The last thing I need is for this thing to leave me stranded somewhere. So I noticed that there's oil leaking into the spark plug area, so it needs a valve cover gasket. So I figure what I'm going to do is uh, the very minimum. I'm going to do the valve cover gasket, spark plugs, ignition wires, and a rotor for a distributor. Now I end up getting these parts at different times so I would have preferred to do all of it together but I didn't have all the parts at the right time. So at this moment all I'm changing is the ignition wires as well as the rotor for distributor. The first time I removed this lever I noticed that it was stuck so I wanted to take it apart, regrease it and just make sure it's working correctly. Problem I ran into is I kind of bit off more than I can chew because I actually disconnected the cable from the back side of it and let's just say I did not have fun trying to put that back together. Now that I'm done with this it was time to put everything back together and I noticed how dirty the fuse panel cover was. So let's take advantage of this. I don't know if this is the original shift knob that came with this car, but as you can see, it's pretty worn out. I have a few of them kicking around the garage here, so let's look at them. The first one is this Momo knob, and I actually bought this for my very first Sierra XS. That's how long I've had it. But I don't want to use it here because I don't like the way it holds on to the lever, which it uses like the three screws that you're supposed to tighten on the side. One of them is even missing. So I just don't like that because I found in the past that it would like randomly pull itself off whenever you're driving. I actually prefer round shift knobs like this one right here. The problem with this one is the thread pitch does not match. It comes with adapters but I can't seem to find them. So it leaves me one option left which is this one. It's not the prettiest but it threads on and it works. And it's not going to be a permanent shift knob. It's just temporary to get rid of that old worn out one. I mentioned earlier that we have to change the wheel bearing, so let's go ahead and knock that out. The retainer ring was stuck in place, so here I am just giving it a few love taps with the air hammer. Here goes the old wheel bearing and it actually came out pretty easy. Next up is a sound most people love. A quick visit over to the Dremel got this race off in just a few minutes. As you can see I just cut it. It didn't take too long. Pretty easy stuff here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and chuck the hub into my sandblaster and try to get any rust that I can off of it. After it's done with sandblasting, I'm going to take it over to my press and we're going to press out that damaged wheel stud and press in a brand new one. As you can see the wheel bearing went in without too much of a fight. 
so that's pretty nice and I'm just gonna go ahead and spray this bare metal with some fluid film just to kind of protect it from any corrosion in the future at this point you want to make sure you have your snap ring in place I did not forget mine it is installed but you do not want to forget that or else you will be taking this all apart again I'm referring to the manual for torque specifications because now it's time to put everything back together now one thing to keep in mind is when I took it apart this castle nut had no cotter pin on it so I'm going to be sure to put a new cotter pin in this once it's all torqued down. And of course I'm also going to spray the face of the hub with some fluid film again to protect it from corrosion. I'm also going to take this opportunity to clean the inside of the hat on the rotor to just get off any debris or rust because we want the rotor to sit nice and flat against the hub. You may have noticed that I'm losing daylight here and there's actually a storm that's coming in so I'm trying to get all this work done as fast as possible so I don't get stuck in the rain. It's now the next day and the valve cover gasket and spark plugs came in so that's today's project. You're going to see a small piece of the old paint flake off of the valve cover here and fall into the engine and don't worry about that I did end up getting it out. I noticed that the windshield wipers are either really worn out as far as the paint or it's just flaking off. So I thought it would be an easy upgrade to just take them off the car and we're going to give them a fresh coat of paint and it will make the car look a little bit better. So it's really easy to just go ahead chuck them in the sandblaster and remove any loose paint or even rust on them. And after that we're going to give it a coat of some self etching primer. In fact I believe I gave it two coats. And after that was all cured I gave it a coat of some trim slash bumper paint yeah that's what it is and it's actually like a matte finish so it actually came out real good there's no gloss to it which is exactly what i was looking for and they turned out great while that paint dries i decided to change the spark plugs really fast
it's now a different day and we're going to move on to the interior we're actually going to remove this block off plate where there would normally be a clock on other models so i went on ebay and i was able to find an oem clock so we're going to go ahead and install that and another while we're in there type of deals you can see how dirty all of this stuff looks so i'm just going to take this opportunity to start cleaning everything I really do love simple modifications like this that just make the interior so much better and it makes the car more practical. Don't you just love the little things, the little details that you could appreciate that you know you put time and effort into but someone else gets into the car and to them it's eh, whatever. The first day I drove the car home, I had no seatbelt buckle on the driver's seat so I actually had to buckle my seatbelt into the passenger seat which was really annoying. But the buckle is here in the car so I'm going to go ahead and pull the driver's seat out and we can fix that. Now that I got the seat out I can have a closer look at everything. I sprayed a fluid film in all of the locations where the bolts go just to kind of make sure it's lubricated. I checked the threads on each one make sure anything wasn't cross threaded and so far so good. And while I was in here I figured I might as well take this off because I figured this was going to be all rusty and crusty down here. I mean everything still works but you could see its condition so i think i'm gonna go ahead and take this off of the car uh put in some rust dissolver maybe sandblast it uh you know do something and then obviously hit it with a coat of uh, fluid film to protect it Now I did notice that the seat is a little uh, tough to move when you're trying to adjust it so I'm just going to go ahead and spray it with some fluid film. Hopefully it helps. Don't even know if I'm spraying in the right spots. And that's a sign to stop right there. <laughs> I got the piece off the car as you can see and here goes its uh, condition. I'm going to see what I could do with it. Um, I don't know, it might have to get replaced if that's even possible. Alright, so here's the part after uh, sandblasting. As you can see, we have some pitting on it, but it still looks like it's going to be usable. The metal doesn't feel weak. It feels like it still has plenty of strength, so yeah, definitely think it's still usable. Looks 10 times better. Um, just gonna go ahead and spray it with some self etching primer let it sit overnight so it dries and I don't know I'm on the fence whether I want to even paint it because uh, it's gonna get a coat of uh, fluid film to stop it from rusting again and as far as inside the car I just kind of came in here I need a light do I have a light let's see okay so I just came in here with the you know the air gun and just kind of cleaned out all the loose rust that was in there and any dirt I'm gonna go ahead and spray this also with fluid film before I put that piece back in it and here it is hold on I got a piece of hair on it I don't know where that came from Ugh. <laughs> okay so here it is uh last night i gave it a coat of some self-etching primer i let that cure and then i gave it a coat of acrylic enamel gloss is optional and uh yeah it's all cured now perfectly safe to handle and it works flawlessly and i even gave the pivoting mechanism down there a shot of uh, some fluid film so it's ready to go back on the car And last but certainly not least, let's replace the door handle. Let's follow the instructions. Remove damaged or defective door handle. Install a new door handle. You are done. <laughs>